Hi everyone. Um, uh, so um, I'd like to present uh, Sofa Gym, which is an open AI interface for Sofa. This is joint work with uh, Etienne, uh, who is also a PhD student in the Defrost team in, uh, in Lille. Um, so a bit of context to start with. Uh, we're going to talk about reinforcement learning and open AI Gym for those who are not familiar with those uh, learning frameworks. Uh, reinforcement learning is a learning framework which intends to learn by trial and error. So in such a framework, you have an agent uh, which learns by interacting with an environment. Uh, on a very basic uh, level, the agent sends actions to the environment to collect uh, new states, uh, which are the results of its actions and rewards. Uh, and the aim of the agent is to maximize the reward uh, it can get. Uh, you might have heard of uh, machine learning algorithms beating Atari games or uh, beating the world champion at Go. Uh, those were all reinforcement learning algorithms. Uh, usually with a two, right now one of the standards to train uh, machine uh, reinforcement learning algorithms is to use OpenAI Gym, um, which is a library um, including several environments uh, which have become uh, a standard benchmark essentially uh, for comparing different algorithms. Uh, here are two more recent uh, um, simulations that are available in it, uh, which are a rigid hand uh, manipulating a cube and a rigid robot arm, which has several functions such as lifting uh, the object or pushing it towards the, the red goal. Um, it's also quite easy to use uh, you just import the library, make the environment, and then you have some basic functions. We'll get back to them, uh, which are reset and uh, step. Uh, and so by looping over those and choosing actions, you can interact with the environment, and that's how uh, your agent will learn. Um, so a bit about our work now. Uh, we coded uh, several environments uh, which aim to serve more as demonstration than uh, as really ready to use plug and play environments. Um, the first one, uh, this was supposed to be animated, but too bad. Uh, the first one is a gripper, which you actually saw in Stefan's uh, uh, presentation earlier. Uh, it's a soft gripper, cable actuated, and the goal is to uh, grasp this cube and get it to the red, uh, the, sorry, the green point. Uh, we also made some tests with other objects, so it's quite easy to, it's a sofa simulation, so it's quite easy to change the mesh of the object you want to manipulate. We can also actuate it uh, using discrete and continuous uh, actuation. Uh, we control the cable length, so the, the, the idea behind this is you can have a fixed um, step uh, variation for your cable length or continuous values. Uh, the second environment we we show is uh, using the trunk, which you saw in uh, Unes's presentation earlier. Uh, the trunk is actuated by eight cables, uh, and by pulling these cables, you can deform it. We have one version of this environment where you try to reach the green dot with the tip of the of the trunk robot, and we have another version where the trunk is grasping uh, a small cup, and so you have to control the position and orientation of this cup by uh, manipulating the cables which actuate the, the trunk. Um, we also have this multigate robot, which is a famous uh, soft robot from the literature from Harvard. Um, so it's a soft silicone body with five cavities, uh, and you can actuate it by inflating or deflating the cavities. Um, in this case, we implemented a position target, so you have to try to uh, move the robot to reach some position, and a speed target, uh, which is just finding an actuation sequence, which allows the robot to move as fast as, uh, as it can. Uh, and finally, we have a maze environment, so this is the tripod robot, which you might be familiar with also. It's a, a, a quite classical example on which we fixed uh, a maze with a small bowl, and you have to navigate the maze with the bowl by moving the uh, servo motors uh, which control the, the tripod. 
Um, so the goal of all this is to allow anyone to add uh, their own scenes as an environment. Uh, so to do this, you need obviously your sofa scene. And in a uh, what we call the toolbox, you need to implement at least three functions, which are get state, get reward, and apply action. Get state has to reward uh, the observation of the state for your learning algorithm. The reward gives you some reward. And apply action is the link between, uh, I don't know, action zero and moving whatever cable or inflating which cavity, that sort of stuff. And on the environment uh, part, which is uh, the, the gym front end in a way, uh, you have to re uh, to implement the reset and step actions uh, functions. I won't get into too much details, but you'll you'll have the, the source code as examples. That's what it's meant for. Um, we use Sofa Python 3 that is uh, essential and we cannot do without it. Uh, at the moment, we're using Sofa CV and image processing uh, plugins. Uh, we would like to uh, not use, not have this dependency in the future, but uh, we we're still working on it. Uh, and most of the environments are based on the Soft Robots plugin also. <laughs> um, so quickly, an overview of some problems we had and how we solved them. Uh, one of the main problem is saving and reloading a scene which has already been simulated. So here you have a schematic view of starting in some state S0, taking an action A0, getting to state S1, etc. And so you take a sequence of actions, uh, you get some reward, and then you say, okay, maybe this action A2 wasn't great. We, I'd like to go back to this state S2 and try some other action. <clears throat> well, the way SOFA is implemented right now, uh, that's not something that's possible because you cannot reload the scene uh, from this state. Um, so we implemented a server worker architecture uh, very quickly where each client uh, each client has a SOFA simulation and is uh, has the, the simulation in some uh, state. And before we take a new action, we fork the client uh, so we duplicate the memory uh, and take the action in the sun uh, of, of the client. Uh, another problem we had was with the viewer because uh, as each client has a sofa simulation, each client has an OpenGL context. And long story short, they, they didn't behave the way we wanted to. So uh, we, um, we implemented, uh, we split the sofa simulation in two parts, uh, one which uh, actually does the mechanics and the computation and another one which is just for the visualization. And so uh, each client has a mechanical simulation, does the com computation, and then we propagate back up um, the positions and that sort of information for the viewer scene, uh, which will uh, just do the rendering. Um, some other features, uh, we support uh, multiple parallel simulations uh, using vectorized environments, and we can also um, uh, send steps asynchronously and to, to different uh, simulations. So to conclude, what's the point of all of this? Uh, if you are from the mechanical, simula mechanical engineering simulation or robotics uh, community, uh, the point of this is to uh, quickly and easily integrate your own simulations and test some baseline RL algorithms on them. And if you are from the learning community, uh, the goal, the more long-term goal, is to have access to new and challenging environments to develop new algorithms, uh, taking into account um, some, some problems that you, you might not have in standard uh, environments. Um, and so to conclude our next steps or future work, uh, within the end of the year, we'd like to train some example policies uh, on the different uh, uh, different environments just to um, showcase what, what we can do. Um, then beginning of next year, we'd like to make some SOFA binaries uh, and publish the, so, the source code of uh, Sofa Gym. The point of making binaries is to make it available to people from the learning community who won't necessarily um, compile Sofa from source um, and also address any com compatibility issues. And later uh, next year, we'd like to use a HTTP server. Uh, that way we can run even more clients on a remote grid. That's all for me. Thanks for listening to
Thank you very much, Pierre, for this nice presentation. So uh, it was one uh, again of my questions was okay, okay, okay. But who, when it's, is that going to be uh, uh, open source, available, maybe or not? How, it's, it's, how is that going to work? So that's uh, that's good to know. Um, I don't know if you have uh, yeah, any 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 video or anything that you'd like to share because uh, if you if you want, you can also use you know if it's on YouTube or in, anything, you can you can share them using the the, the share is share video button. If you'd like to show, you can also test to share the screen shortly. If you'd like to show uh, show us some some video, but I think meanwhile there was a question here from Cheng Ni uh, saying, yeah. So is there a commercial compare for, for example, how much cost by rendering billions of triangles? Uh, it, was that maybe? Yeah, no, sorry, no, sorry. Was I'm not sure that's for me. Sorry, it was for ZQ. So Cheng Ni, uh, you'll have again the, the, the opportunity to directly open your mic in the, in the breakout room. Is there any question for Pierre so far regarding maybe you're simply interested to test it and you can also let, let Pierre know? Uh, I think, yeah, that's going to be of interest of many, many people here. Coupling, uh, reinforcement learning and simulation uh, has a, a lot of uh, lights currently on. So is there any question on this topic? Yeah. I'll start, uh, I'll start, I'll start with one uh, anyway. Uh, the um, Yeah, first, I guess, is, is that cross-platform or for, for you for the moment you tested it only on Linux or because I, I think you are a Linux worker? If I yeah, yeah, it's uh, we we only tested it on Linux, I think. Uh, the The idea is to make binaries, and otherwise, it's just Python code. So I don't really see why there would be an issue using it on other platforms, so long as the binaries work. Um, but from the purely sofa gym part, I don't think it's uh, it's going to be an issue. Okay, Pasquale was asking, is it will be open source? Question mark. So. It, uh, yeah, we we intend to make it open source, but it's not not very stable right now. So we have to to work on it. But yeah, the the main idea is to uh, provide those environments as mostly demonstrations and have other people from the community contribute their own simulations and environments to make the library grow. Because uh, right now it's only a couple robots from the Defrost team. Um, but surely there are other people out there making interesting simulations. So, yeah. Yeah, I think it. Uh, thank you for for, for the for, for the details. Uh, I think it, it could be also interesting to for for ZQ and I, I know so for the last presentation of the of really today of the symposium that will be made by Paul, working you know on, also on needle needle insertion strategies for robotics application could be super interesting to couple couple that kind of topics. Uh, I see Thierry is typing a question, so we'll see. Yeah, uh, I failed to catch what was the input for that uh, for 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 the whole platform. Do you need some special kind of sofa scene, or is that usual sofa scenes? Um, so it is. Uh... It should work with any sofa scene. The the things you need is what what we call the toolbox here, which is the get state. So this is, um, for instance, in the case of the trunk, it's the position of the tip, for instance. Uh, some reward for moving towards the 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 goal, and applying the action. In the case of the trunk, it's like action zero is shortening cable number one by uh, some value. Uh, so this is essentially what you need to add to your usual uh, sofa scene. Uh, we use sofa Python three controllers, uh, so it's it's quite standard. It it shouldn't uh, shouldn't those, be anything very specific. Those get state reward and apply action they are uh, Python functions then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just right now we, we're using controllers and just reading values from, like, getting the position from some mechanical object in the scene, for instance. So possibly, which what it means, and that I think why so you want you you are addressing all this work to uh, to the um, reinforcement learning communities because it could be accessible to anyone without even a line of C plus plus, just Python, and that's it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm a really bad C plus plus coder, so it's it's doable. <laughs> Thank you very, very much for this nice presentation. We've got uh, maybe one, uh, one last question for Zara, and there will be then uh, the breakout rooms organized again by Guillaume. 
just while uh, while Zara is typing, and again, Zara, do not hesitate to, to join uh, to join the breakout room to, to ask further question to Pierre, and the same for asking further question to Jean Nicolas about the Caribou plugin and to ZQ for the matrix uh, the matrix assembly, for instance, for you Cheng Ni, I, I saw that you had additional points. Just before going into the breakout rooms, uh, two things I want I want you to remind. First, again, everything is recorded. All the presentation uh, should be uh, should be possible poss possibly shared with you. So uh, do not hesitate to let us know if you if you are missing some info. But you sh you should receive everything by the end of uh, of the week. And second point is that um, I'm going to take thank you again, Pierre. So we'll join uh, in a in a second in the in the break uh, breakout rooms. 